Since Pokemon's introduction, every Nintendo console, except the humiliating failure of the Wii U, has had a Pokemon Stadium style game. A Nintendo 64 had Pokemon Stadium 1 and 2, which covered the first two generations respectively. The GameCube had Colosseum for Generation 3, and the Wii had Pokemon Battle Revolution for Generation 4. However, we haven't had a game of this genre in over 12 years since Pokemon Battle Revolution launched in 2007 for the Western audience. Battle Revolution was received mediocrely. The Nintendo Switch is a new era, and with the recent upsurge in Pokemon's popularity in recent years, I predict we'll get a new installment. However, the main draw of the previous versions were 3D battles, something we already have in the core genre already. So what's the point of a new Stadium game? Unlike the core RPG, Stadium games don't allow you to just overpower them through levels. This means they force the player to learn how to battle, can offer challenges to both new and veteran players alike without having to alienate them, which has been a growing problem as the core games have grown both more complex and watered down the story difficulty. One of my fondest memories of Stadium 2 is Earl's Pokemon Academy. If you've forgotten about this gem from the game, don't worry. I haven't heard someone mention it in nearly 15 years. With dozens of different lessons on type matchups, item usage, strengths and weaknesses of Pokemon, and general rules, it was rewarding to read through and complete everything. It even offered mock battles where you had to pick and execute the proper strategy to get full credit. The Pokemon library was complete from the start, letting you check what game and where to catch them. The move index allowed you to look up all the statistics tied to moves. They were both amazing resources for players. Earl even had a handy dandy type matchup chart, which needs to be updated nowadays of course. With how complex the Pokemon games have become, we often rely on sites such as Cerebi and Bulbapedia. Big thanks to them rather than the games themselves to explain their mechanics. Most players are too intimidated to jump into competitive matches, and rightly so. Furthermore, some of the battle modes that are uncommon within the game, such as double battle, triple battle, rotation battle, and inverse battles, can be more prominently showcased. Since stadium games are more on battling than catching, a larger bulk of the play content can be dedicated to interesting matches. If it wasn't for the creation of Little Cup in Stadium 2, my favorite Smogon tier, I might have never gotten to battle with tiny powerhouses. Junoichi Masuda stated that even if a specific Pokemon is not available in Pokemon Sword and Shield, that does not mean it will not appear in future games. See, the Switch isn't on the end of its, end of its life. March 3rd, 2017 saw the Switch's debut. Generation 8 will launch two years, eight months into its lifespan. Each generation has lasted between three and four years, with installments in between generations, often remakes of older generations with a twist. More than likely, Generation 9 will also end up on the Switch towards the end of 2022, and while stretching, it's possible Generation 10 will too sometime in 2025. See, the Pokemon games have to be streamlined and put up because they're the roots of the Pokemon brand. Game Freak are very slow adapters to modern strategies such as DLC and patches, so aside from significant bug fixes, I doubt any updates will occur to add content to Sword and Shield. However, the Stadium games are not made by Game Freak. HAL Laboratory was responsible for the first two Stadium games. Genius Sonority made Colosseum, XD Gale of Darkness, and Battle Revolution. Well, possibly pure coincidence, Genius Sonority has a track record of a game every two years, and hasn't published since 2017, when it put out a mobile game, The New Denpa Men. They very likely could be actively working on a large-scale Pokemon project, without the insane crunch dilemma that Game Freak is under since their goal would be to create upscaled versions of previous Pokemon instead of new, never-before-seen creatures, tile sets, regions, and other players, they'd have a more focused workload ahead of them. Regardless though, while I'm sure I'll miss a ton of Pokemon Generation 8, I survived the move from Generation 2 to 3, where nothing transferred forward. I'll survive a few more years without every Pikachu clone. Oh my god. It's adorable!